Okay, cool. So now let's, uh, so I want to like really drill in on what it takes to show something's a subgroup. Of course, like you can use the subgroup, subgroup test or whatever, but how do we do it if it's like in this form? A lot of times we see subgroups written in this form, right? Where you've got a arbitrary element of the parent group and then it satisfies some sort of rule, right? So like centralizer subgroup, satisfies some sort of rule. Normalizer subgroup satisfies some sort of rule. We'll look at another one real quick that satisfies some sort of rule. And so essentially all the time you want to use the subgroup test because it just simplifies everything. Although you don't like have to, you could use the definition of a subgroup. But here's the idea. So you take, uh, maybe we'll call it X and Y and H and just in the back of your mind you want to think that uh, X and Y satisfy whatever rule that's defining the subgroup, right? Because that's what it means to be in that set. To be in that set means you satisfy the rule, right? Yeah. And then next what you want to do is show that x, y inverse also satisfies whatever the rule is. Because again, satisfying the rule means that you are in that set, right? Okay, so uh, I know maybe this is sort of nebulous or whatever, but if you look at like how in the video we did the centralizer subgroup is actually a subgroup. We did that, right? We took two things from the centralizer subgroup and then showed that when we combine them in a certain way, that satisfied the rule of being in the centralizer subgroup. Well, now we could do another one real quick, maybe one that's even like a little bit easier. Let's say we define this set, capital SL2R. And so you might say, well, what's that? Well, that's gonna be all matrices A in GL2R such that the determinant of A equals 1. Now, just as a little reminder, I think that this GL2 was like given as one of the very first examples of a group, but does anyone remember what it is? So these are 2 by 2 matrices with Well, this is the Lie group for the Lie algebra. So with non-zero determinant. Okay, so that's what GL2R is. So non-zero determinant, but by the invertible matrix theorem, what does non-zero determinant mean? By the invertible matrix theorem. It has an inverse, yeah. And so that makes this a group under matrix multiplication. Right. Of course, it's not an abelian group because we know. Uh, Matrices don't always. Yeah, exactly. Right. So now we want to show that this is a subgroup. So let's say we want to show that SL2R is, in fact, a subgroup of uh, GL2R. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's take A and B inside of SL2R. But let's observe that that means that the determinant of A and the determinant of B are both equal to 1, right? Because that's what it takes to be inside of this set. You have to have determinant 1. And now let's uh, notice that if we take the determinant of um, a times B inverse, well, now we're going to use some rules from linear algebra. So the determinant of a product is the same thing as the product of the determinant, right? It's like a, it's like a rule, yeah. So this turns into the determinant of A times the determinant of B inverse. So that's a fact from linear algebra. And then another fact from linear algebra is that the determinant of the inverse is 1 over the determinant of the original matrix. 
Okay. Do, do those seem like kind of familiar from linear algebra? Yeah. But then like, look, we know determinant A and determinant B are both 1. So this turns into 1 times 1 over 1, which is equal to 1, right? So now this calculation tells you that AB inverse is inside of this SL2R, right? Because it, it satisfies the condition to be inside of there, right? Right? The entry fee to be inside of that set is that your determinant is 1, right? And then, well, the determinant of that's 1. So, you're in, so it is inside of that set.